I am the Eggman. Cuckoo Kaju. I'm Dan and I've been designing kitchen gadgets for 39 years. I'm gonna test some egg gadgets and see if I can find a way to make them better. To make this a little bit taller, adding a rubber gasket like this, have something come out like that. These are the products I am going to test. Scrambled egg maker. Egg top cracker. Egg stripper. Yolk fish egg separator. Egg extractor. Scrambled egg maker. This device is designed to scramble an egg while it is still in the shell. You know, just in case your kitchen doesn't have a fork. Let's test its effectiveness. Step one is to pull these two halves apart. And let me see if I can get that to work. Okay, the egg obviously sits inside. I will place it and see if I can reassemble. It's not that easy or clear. I think the egg is in. Let's give it some spins. Okay, I'm gonna give it about 20 spins. Nothing else, you get some exercise. Okay, I think we're good. Let's disassemble. Let's crack it open and see what we got. Whoop. Well, not very scrambled. That wasn't great. Let's try another one. This time, let's give it more than 20 spins. Let's give it like 30 or 40. Not only to scramble the egg, but I could use the exercise. Okay, let's disassemble. Grab a bowl, crack it open. Oh, and that time we got a scrambled egg. Maybe the second time is the charm. Let's assume by chance you don't have a scrambled egg maker. We're gonna try it with just using a whisk. In terms of effectiveness on a scale of one to five, I would give it a 3.5. Boy, it took a little bit of work. To test usability, I'm gonna do the left-handed oil test. By making my non-dominant hand more slippery, it's gonna highlight any deficiencies or areas for improvement. First of all, I'm having trouble just holding this. And I think uh, we're in trouble. There's really nothing to grab onto here. It's just a little way too slippery. Let me try some brute strength here. It's not happening. Giving up. In terms of usability on a scale of one to five, I would rate this a two, only because this is way too fussy to line up. Let's see how I would suggest redesigning this. Number one, I noticed with larger eggs, they didn't exactly want to fit. So even though these fins are flexible, Larger eggs really resisted the, the task of putting the two halves together. Could be hard to see, but these two little teeth need to line up. This is the bulb. And here actually is one of the white teeth and the other one. I would make those huge, maybe even rounded or in some shape that would actually allow them to be, number one, be obvious, but also look like they're two puzzle pieces that need to come together. And probably put those on both sides, make that symmetrical. Next thing I would do is change this shape so that it has at least some flat surfaces or something that we could spin against each other. Maybe make a flat here, even though it's round, give something to grab onto. I know it's egg shaped, which is kind of cute, but it also makes it difficult. That or the fin itself could be shaped so that it's easy to grab, so that your fingers would not just slip right off of it, right? So I would take this ring piece. It has small dimples in it, but I think I would really exaggerate those quite a bit. What you want to happen is you want your fingers to sink into something, if you're going to open this lid. And there are very small concave areas here that in theory is designed to get your fingers in there, but they're really not very effective. So what I would do on this is just exaggerate those, like really exaggerate them just so that you have something, to, your fingers can sink into them and you have something to push against. When you don't have something to pull into like that, when your fingers don't sink in, you need to try to compensate by squeezing harder to get some friction. In terms of a buy rating, I would give it a two out of five. There is no real reason for this product to exist. Egg top cracker. It is designed to open up the top of an egg. Let's test how effective it is on a soft boiled egg. Place it on top. In the middle, pull up, let go. Let's see if we cracked it. Not exactly. I'm gonna give it another shot. 
this time around, I'm going to try the large side of the egg. Release. It's not coming off in one piece. The good news is it is coming off with a pretty straight, clean line around the edge of the egg. But it does take some extra peeling. Once done, though, it is pretty presentable looking. It's pretty round. Let's try one more. Again, I think I'm having better luck with the large size of the egg. And similar, take some peeling. It doesn't just pop off like a hat. But in the end, it ends up with a pretty clean round cut. So if you're into soft boiled eggs, I'd say this works okay. You know, lately, actually, I have, I've been eating soft boiled eggs. It was kind of fun to eat out of an egg cup like this. It's a nice presentation, even if you're in a hurry in the morning. So let's say there's a chance that your kitchen doesn't have an egg top cracker. What's it like to do it with a knife? Let's compare. In terms of effectiveness on a scale of one to five, I would give this a four. I think it has a little bit of room for improvement. If nothing else, it gives you a pretty clean cut around the egg, even if you have to go in and peel it. It also has its fun aspect of cracking the egg open, so it is kind of fun to use it. To test usability, I'm gonna do the left-handed oil test. Both hands are slippery. I'm gonna use my left hand, though, to raise the ball and release it. No problem with that because there's really no dexterity involved in raising this and releasing it. The result that time with this egg, whoa, look at this, came out pretty easily. A little bit of strength needed to pull up the spring, but really not very much at all. In terms of usability, on a scale of one to five, I would give this a four. This may be difficult for some people who don't have use of both hands, but this is pretty easily operated. Let's think about a redesign. Right now, it looks like this, and when the ball is extended, we're up here. So what we have is a shaft here and a spring. I think what I would try is two things. One, I would make this a little bit taller, which means the ball would end up here and give a little more momentum, at least give you the option of pulling this up as far as needed to release it. The other thing I think I would try is the shape down here. Uh, instead of just being a straight edge, I think I would try a serrated edge or some scalloped edge or something that would start to break into the shell. I'm wondering if that would actually give a little more force and be a little more effective in breaking through the surface. My buy rating for the egg top cracker on a scale of one to five is five. If you want to be more popular at breakfast, get an egg top cracker. Do this in front of the family and I think you have a pretty good family gathering with everyone getting into soft boiled eggs. Egg stripper. It is designed to strip the shell off of a hard boiled egg. Let's see how effective it is. Step one is to fill it up to the line with some water. I've got three hard boiled eggs. I'll twist it tight and let's start shaking. So the good thing about being clear is that we can see some progress if there is any progress. And I can see the shell starting to crack. Although they're not completely off, they started pretty well. They do peel pretty easily. So I would say this is successful. I feel like I'm going to give the third one a little more of a shake. And let's see if we can get the shell off completely. Well, the shell is still intact. Or mostly intact. No, it didn't completely remove. But it's definitely loosened. If nothing else, it gives the eggs a really good start. Do we really need the egg stripper? What if we use the normal jar? So what I've got here is a clasp jar, and I'm going to try the same thing. In terms of effectiveness, I would give the egg stripper a 3.5 out of 5. I really expected a little more magic. I expected the eggs to be completely peeled, and that wasn't the case. It's time for the left-handed oil test. I can see right away that this is just a little bit difficult to pinch. Let's place in three eggs. Close it up. It's a little more difficult to close it up tightly. This may leak. It doesn't feel like it's totally sealed, but let's, tr let's give it a try. Yeah, you can tell it's leaking a little more. I wasn't able to tighten the ring nearly as tightly as I did before. It is a little difficult to hold on to. I feel like I need to hold this with two hands. And I don't think that's really um, 
necessary. I think this could be shaped so that it's possible to shake this with one hand. So if I had my other hand free, at least I can eat some chips or whatever else is on the, on the table. That came off okay, no problem, but we do have an egg casualty. So I'd say it's semi-successful, at least two out of three eggs. In terms of usability, on a one to five scale, I would give this a two. The table's pretty much a mess here. Okay, let's see how I would redesign the egg stripper. A couple of things I think are, are very obvious. One is that uh, because it leaks so badly, you would think there'd be a better seal or a better gasket around the rim uh, and also a better way to tighten it. So while this is just completely round, as you're spinning it, it doesn't give you anything to push up against or grab onto. I would add some shape to this, either flat or in a couple places, do something like that, or maybe even have something come out like that so that you really have something to push against because you really don't want to start shaking this and have water fly all over the place. Also, I think in terms of this shape, the egg shape also resists hanging onto. I think I would look into making this usable as a one-hand operation. So what that would mean is I would mold something on here like that, kind of like a shape you would have on, on the lid of a pot, like a really basic pot. So you can grab this like that, one-handed. Once you're sure that it's sealed up, you can start shaking away. Should you buy an egg stripper? In terms of a buy rating, I would give this a one out of five. It's nice, but it's got some serious competition from things that you probably already have in your kitchen. Egg stripper, I apologize, I only give you a one. Please forgive me. Yolk fish, egg separator. Its purpose in life is to suck the yolk away from the egg white. Okay, let's see how effective it is. Suck it up, whoop. Had a bit of a failure there because in sucking it up, the yolk uh, broke. Cute fish. Not that great at sucking eggs. I think I may have squeezed the fish's belly a bit as I was pushing it up. I'm gonna try again without squeezing the fish. Gonna squeeze the fish. Be careful not to break it. Try a twist. Get rid of that part of the white. And success. Good job, fish. I take all the blame. Now I'm gonna try separating the egg yolk the normal way with my bare hands. So I really like the fish, but for comparison, I am going to try this another way. Water bottle, fish. Not as cute, but just as effective. In terms of effectiveness, I would give the fish a five out of five. It's kind of fun, it's kind of cute. I am into the fish. Time for the left hand oil test. I'm gonna use this one-handed with my left hand. Squeeze, pick it up. It's a little slippery, but it's okay. There's no weight involved, no force involved. So that worked fine. I think it's all good. In terms of usability, I would give this a five out of five basically just squeezing a rubber bulb and it's not difficult to do. Okay, let's talk about redesign. I do like the fish, but I do have a suggestion for it. Nice little fish. Fish will suck the yolk. It's got a fin on top, it's got a fin on bottom. I think the fish would benefit from a fin on the side because when you're holding this and unsqueezing it, you need to unsqueeze but still keep the stable and I found myself, well, it's a little slippery, right? Because you are holding a shape that is moving in that direction, which means it's easy for this to uh, fall down. I think having fins on the side would give me something to pull up on without squeezing. And uh, you don't want to squeeze because just a little bit of pressure is going to release the yolk and possibly even break the yolk. Goldie the Suckerfish. I named it. In terms of a buy rating, I would give Goldie the sucker fish a five out of five. This is just too cute to pass up. Good job, Goldie. Thank you very much. Egg extractor. Okay, so guess what this is? You're wrong. This is designed to remove the shell from the egg in one easy press. Step one is to get a hard boiled egg and there's a pin on here. I'm gonna make a hole 
And I'm going to do it a few times. Crack the bottom. Put this on top. Give it some air pressure. Hold tight. Hmm. No action yet. Let's give it another try. Hmm. It's not happening. One more. Maybe it's a speed thing, or maybe I'm not cracked enough. Let me actually open this up a bit. I know that's a little cheating, but I do want to see if this works at all. Oh, well, I guess a couple of pushes, and the egg will pop out almost completely shelled, but not quite. Let's try one more time. I'm not sure this is the quickest way to shell a hard-boiled egg. Doesn't really work. Let's see what happens by hand. I would give the extractor on a scale of one to five, I would give it a zero. I know there is no zero, but I, I just don't see any reason for this product to exist. Okay, left-handed oil test time. Use my left hand to push down. So the good news is it works just as bad with your left hand as your right hand. It's not uh, biased to one hand or the other or to a non-dominant hand, but I can't get it to work in either situation. In terms of usability, on a one to five scale, I would give this a zero. Not the world's greatest design. If anything, it's consistent on how badly it works. Well, in terms of a redesign, the extractor, I believe, needs a lot of work. But for one thing, I would take this corrugated shape And I would make sure that the wall thickness here of the plastic is thin enough so that it doesn't have so much tension when you try to press it down. The other thing I would do is now if you have an egg here, what we have here is a uh, hard plastic. But the egg easily goes out of whack and this hard plastic creates air gaps. Adding a rubber gasket like this, which helps to cradle the egg, can keep the shell in place as the egg is ejected. The device itself is rather large. Uh, these feet are a bit slippery on a countertop, and I think you'd want to stabilize this, especially with the amount of force that you may have to exert on this. Better yet would be some rubber feet. Also, a three-legged stool like this is a little unstable. I would give this four legs, maybe even five legs, just to increase the stability when pressure is applied. In terms of a buy rating, I would give the extractor a big egg shape zero. It just seems so unnecessary. If I had to change anything about the design, I would make it out of biodegradable plastic because I think you'll be throwing it away pretty quickly. There are areas and opportunities for innovation in the kitchen, even with simple tasks like separating an egg. But boy, some of these are really misfires. The ones that worked were really kind of fun and clever. They're playful. They are fun to do, and you know, most importantly, they work. Out of the five, my two favorite were the egg topper and the sucking fish. Okay? Okay. See you soon. See you soon.